Hello and welcome back to Fire Emblem The Last Promise, a 0% growth slow turn count playthrough. Sorry it's been a while, I moved into college and things got complicated. This chapter primarily focuses on us seizing the throne. It's chapter 8. There's a couple of side objectives. There's cavaliers on the right, one of them has a drop of speed wing, and we desperately want that. This is also the chapter that contains the final emblem weapon that we can obtain in Siegfried mode. It's the Emblem Blade. We do need to collect it. There's three technically recruitable units on this map. With two green soldiers there and there's a green cavalier up higher. We don't need to care about them. They will join us later regardless of whether or not we free them here or not. Recruiting them would only take turns. We send Arthur to the right mainly to get him experience, but also because he's the only unit that can realistically take on all these cavaliers. and he benefits a little bit from the experience in case I did need to promote him. The boss is a shaman. He is kind of difficult to take down in one round of combat, and honestly, I make a very stupid mistake. I was trying to kill her with the Iron Blade using Noah, and I kind of forgot that I can just two-round her over enemy phase and player phase. So instead, I just rig a crit that was not needed at all. Which is entirely on me. We're trying to use Noah to muscle through a majority of this map because he is our best combat unit by far, with Shuda, Siegfried, and Storm picking up the slack. Altaris is only here to open the door, although it does kill a few enemies here and there. We have Altarius steal this elixir just because we don't need vulneraries that much, and it's just an upgrade. Honestly, it would have been better if he didn't have a sword. That kill lance wasn't necessary to kill that soldier. Tamika will also get some lance, not lance, staff experience here, but it's not super necessary. Altarius just needs to dodge one of the two attacks that go his way during this enemy phase. That choke point there in between the two moves is a bit annoying if it got blocked up for us, but hey, it's okay. The main thing we're doing with Arthur, as I said, is to get the speed. We do need that. It is a stat booster that raises actual distance. At the start of the chapter, Sean used an energy ring. It's not needed in this chapter. He's not even deployed. Uh, but it is helpful in chapter 10. And he's the unit that best makes use of it. So that's what Now he's still not We do some strange RM burns here, uh, so that Storm can get a kill go crit against this. Most of the combat for this chapter is actually already done. That's the other reason we stole the elixir is because Siegfried just runs out of haste there. We do some more funky RM burns, mainly for some dodges on the second phase. But also to set up just the first crit. We could use a unit like Sia over on the right side, but Arthur gets more benefit out of it technically and we don't really care about Sia. Arthur thankfully does just enough damage to that uh, Cavalier in the back. Uh, well, more so the Cavalier has just enough health that uh, Arthur won't die by killing the first Cav, killing the second Cav. A lot of focus went into Noah's sword rank. He doesn't end up hitting your ring swords, and in fact, he needs to. And that is a mistake on my part. I also think Zeke could have done enough damage to send that half in the healing AI with a killer lens crit, but it's not like it matters. Arthur 
I guess just be a little bad. Regardless, it is helpful. His survival in this chapter is actually really, really, uh, really consistent. He just needs to not miss this attack. You get an iron sword. We don't. You only need one crit there with that killer lance. That throne room is pretty weird, and Alparis has a low chance of survival, or a low chance of death, rather, during this coming turn. So we need to have some strange positioning, but it works out. If Arthur killed this cavalier, the thief would have a chance of killing him, I believe. But he doesn't kill the cat. That crit is not necessary, all it does is save us and back to use. Siegfried's chance of death there is small, but he can die if everything hits him. That crit was needed to kill that soldier, though. Honestly, I should have given Siegfried the Lance Reaper. It's technically slightly better to heal Arthur before to kill that cavalier, just in case he rift, but regardless of he misses, he dies, so. You get the speed ring, we don't care about the extra iron sword. That speed ring will go to a Admittedly strange unit, but you'll figure out why soon. And if you watch the original video, you'll find out We do need to equip that soon. We don't need to hand axe kill this guy, but. Eh. Also, I. Definitely could have just given no other killer niche. Uh, or the Lance Reaver, and had him crit with that compared to the Iron Blade. No, Secret did a Lance Reaver effect, okay. My mistake. But, this next turn I could have just passed the. This next turn I could have just given him the killing edge before he kills the boss, and I've just gotten a crit with that if I needed to crit kill her. Those burns remain me for survival. Altaris has a somewhat notable chance of death, and Siegfried's chance of survival here is not great. That's A-ranked lances! He can use silver lances if I ever needed him to. Giving Storm the Stormbringer actually only gives him two extra points of avoid, but hey, every little bit helps. The speed wings do get stolen there, but the thief will drop them when he dies, so. By passing Tamiko here, all of Arthur's items, he honestly could have just come in this chapter with just a lightning tone. Yeah. No it was two points of damage short of one man with the steel sword. I could have just had him wait here on enemy phase. I could have traded him. The Killing Edge from Shuda. I could have given it to your Siegfried with Shuda, and then... There's a lot of things I could have done, but... The most notable one is just two round of her over enemy phase and player phase. It gives the same amount of sword rank, and in hindsight, it doesn't matter. The main thing is we desperately need that, uh, Knight dead by the end of this turn, because we need that Altaris to get in that ch uh, chest room by the next turn. This is why I said we might not be able to get away with using the Killing Edge, because... 
We do need Shooter to use it here. He needs to get one of two crits there. Although, honestly, Shooter would have been able to just run around with the Iron Blade. But, uh, I didn't think of it when I was recording this chapter for the first time. I didn't want to desperately uh, change the strategy that bad. It still works out in the end. Tamiko's heal here is not needed. Storm came in with the chest key, yeah, I forgot to mention that. We do need that. But now we have a very, very stupid, unnecessary arm. I don't know if Noah can double Mina with the Iron Blade. If he can't, that's fair, actually. Mina does have an elixir, and that's why uh, she she did use it. Uh, but that's why she can't just be more around it. What I'm doing here is setting up an anchor secret with the steel sword. There's not much to say in this meantime. This chapter is clear to me because after I kill Mina, I just use what's secret. This boss kill is very unreliable and it is futile. It's not like last map, where there's an excuse, at least, for having to be so unreliable. But with that, it's Chapter 8, Clear the Eight Turns. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time for Chapter 9 and Chapter 10. Goodbye.